Hey, everybody. Mary Gaucher here with Jamie Harris, live from our, what do we call this, office? You've always called it the office. Some, well, sometimes it's office the from the room. writing room in lovely Green Hills, Nashville, Tennessee. Where it is 91. It's cold. Oh, it's hot. It's, it's summer. Um, we are in a little bit of a heat thing here, and it's uh, it's real nice. The garden loves it, and um, it's a beautiful day, and we're glad to be with you. We've got Terry Radigan with us today. Uh, I am so excited to introduce her to all of you who haven't heard her, and if you're coming to us from her Facebook page, hey, <laughs> she's here. She'll be with us shortly. Um, Jamie and I have been on the road. We missed you last week. We were traveling from Austin to Phoenix, if That's I remember right, right on it. Sunday last week. Uh, and then we drove from Phoenix to Winslow, Arizona, where we stayed at the lovely La Posada Hotel. Uh, and yes, there is a giant standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona thing happening in Winslow, Arizona, in honor of the Jackson Brown song made famous by the Eagles. Um, and they play uh, that music on, uh, from every possible corner. angle, corner. <laughs> it's all they play. I've never seen so many flatbed Fords in my life. Flatbed Ford. <laughs> uh, it was great, though. The La Posada is a really nice, um, beautiful, uh, historic hotel. Um, and the couple who own it do a wonderful job uh, uh, as hoteliers. Uh, the... Um, in the turquoise room, the food. The wife of the hotelier is named Tina, Tina Mion, and she's an unbelievable painter. Uh, and the uh, turquoise room restaurant in the hotel is fantastic. Uh, so we ate too much, uh, but we did find a, uh, a walking trail. Jamie and, and Bonnie did a hike. Uh, we rode a train uh, that was a, a wonderful train trip uh, that... Uh, we enjoyed it, and we had a good little time out on the road. Uh, in the in the U.S., uh, things are opening up rapidly. Um, in fact, this morning for my swim at the YMCA, I swim every day. Uh, they've uh, reopened the saunas as of today, uh, and masks are now uh, optional. At the YMCA. At the YMCA, mm. optional masks as of today, and uh, reopened the saunas. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so we're coming, we're coming back around here, and uh, things are changing quickly. Uh, but uh, we're happy to be with you today. We got some songs, got some stories. We got our friend uh, Michele is with us uh, from Italy. Uh, he looks very handsome today. Uh, he does look extra handsome. He always looks handsome, but he, today he uh, has a certain glow about him. He does. And uh, can't wait to get started. Let's just get this thing going, sure. shall we? Crescent City disappearing in the rear view mirror Just like she's always done Spend my life running from the ghosts of the VUCA rain And that dirty spillway water in the noonday sun Daughters of charity left their mark on me Keeping secrets well, it just makes you feel alone Magazine Street stole from me Never thought I'd find my way home Thank God for you Thank God for you Wake up in the morning I thank God for you Thank God for you I thank God 
thank God for you Wake up in the morning, I thank God for you Another junkie, Jones and on the Greyhound bus with a 20 year ticket to a tortured mind. Siren sorrow, cigarette butts. My Jesus in pieces, broken as a highway line. Thank God for you. Thank God for you Wake up in the morning I thank God for you Thank God for you I thank God for you Wake up in the morning I thank God for you You give me something no one can take away You saw right through me And love me anyway oh. Thank God for you Thank God for you Wake up in the morning I thank God for String, strings go sharp when there's a lot of air condition going on. I think so. I know so. It does something, it tightens the wood and it, it makes the strings uh, go sharp. Yeah, the coldness, yeah. And when it's hot, they go flat. Mm -hmm. And this is all I've learned in 30 years of playing this machine. <laughs> Let's play our friend David Olney's song. Oh, sure. We brought this back out uh, the other night in Winslow in the final concert. And I just love this song so much. And we miss David only so much. So let's play uh, The Women Cross the River, a song recorded by as a duet with Emmy Lou Harris and the great, great Linda Ronstadt. As, as a songwriter, what else would she's you... She's just great. She's not the late great. No, I didn't say late great. I thought you said the late no, great. No, I, I, I meant <laughs> I to like, say the great. She's actually doing a book of it today. She's, she's... No, they're doing... I didn't say late oh, great. I thought you said the late great. No, so. I, I didn't say that. No, I know. We were at her house. She's, she's very much alive. <laughs> I stumbled over the first... The uh, sorry, G. I thought... You, I missed her. I, I missed her you, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. The women cross the river, carry water from the well at break of day. And they talk to one another, God only knows what they might say.
You might get an education After years of dedication You might finally get a glimpse of what is right And what is wrong But the women cross the rail Well they knew that all along The women cross the river work with tools that are ancient and handmade. And they plow their fields in perfect rows and then rest beneath the shade. We have learned to build out of concrete, out of steel And our buildings stand a thousand years And then even they are bound to fall But the women cross the river Never learned to build a wall The women across the river are as gentle as the dew upon the ground. How I love to hear them laughing in the rain when it makes that perfect sound. A soldier with a gun And a battle to be won Might kill you with a bullet And you never even know the reason why But the women cross the river They can kill you with their eyes Cross the river, they can kill you with their eyes. David only song. Well, I'm going to play a song uh, that I wrote a bunch of years ago at a songwriting with soldiers retreat. And I wrote this with a group of military spouses. And I'm going to use it as a segue before we bring in Terry Radigan, because that's where I met Terry is. Oh, uh, yeah. We're working through the songwriting with soldiers program. So uh, I think I'm going to play this song. Uh, it's called The War After the War. And it's written by myself and Beth Nielsen Chapman and six military spouses who told us their story uh, in uh, uh, a small uh, amount of time. We were able to do this in like less than two hours. Uh, just uh, listened and wrote and it came alive into this song. And uh, it's 
called War After the War. Who's gonna care for the ones who care for the ones who went to war? There's landmines in the living room, eggshells on the floor. Loves myself in the shadow of your honor and your pain. You stare out of the window as her dreams go down the drain. After the war, let's bring our friend Terry in and see how things are going over there. <laughs> Boy, you two sound so damn good. Oh, oh thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, how are you? I'm good. I got mm. my uh, my songwriting with soldiers pick. Oh. oh. You know what's remarkable is that you can never keep a pick. Yeah, but I true. cannot lose these. There's some I, sort of magic magnetism to them. I got a drawer full of them. I save them all because they, each of them uh, means uh, the completion of a retreat. Uh, yes. They gi they're given to us at the end of a retreat. Uh, and so much uh, 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 symbolism is involved in oh the completion. Goodness, yeah. yeah. So I met you through songwriting with soldiers a bunch of years ago. We sure did. I think we were in. Uh, I think we were in Virginia. It, I don't remember time very well, but I do, <laughs> I do remember you, uh, and I remember your generous spirit. I remember how really wonderful you are with the veterans, uh, and you're able to to um, to negotiate the, uh, the 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 delicacies of writing with people um, who are in pain a lot of the time. Uh, you're a master. You're one of the the true well, um, uh, 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 empaths of this work, and I was in awe of you then. I'm in awe of you now. Well, that is really sweet of you to say. That song that you and Beth wrote that you just played, beautiful. Thank beautiful. you. Because I could hear those women in that song. 
Every yeah, that's word. the that's the challenge, right? Is to to use Ooh. their language and find a melody that matches the emotion they're expressing. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. And you know like you said, you've got like you you have to walk in there knowing everything you know about writing a song. And then you need to forget it. Yeah. <laughs> and then you need to just listen because if you start leaving the room in your head with what you know what am I going to do and I don't want to blow this then you know it's not there so we talked about it early you just trust in the song the song does the heavy lifting and, it sure does uh, you bring all of your experience in like you said but in the end you can't be thinking about craft you have to be paying attention and bearing witness to someone who's in pain it's quite the juggling act yeah, it's really, I'll tell you, I leave better after every single session that I ever have because you just have to figure out who the song is serving, and it's not there to serve me. Right. So, yeah. Right, Oof. right, that's how you do it. It's you pretty can... incredible, man. And I I, aside from all meeting all these different soldiers and first responders and their spouses, then I get to meet all these other wonderful songwriters through there, so it's awesome. I agree. I agree. I, w I, I would have not been uh, given the opportunity to collaborate with you and spend time with you if it wasn't for that program. So hallelujah for that, too. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So you're making it through the pandemic okay. You're in upstate New York somewhere? Yep. Deep in the Catskill Mountains. Oh, mm, man. It's wow. nice up there in the spring and the early summer. Yeah. We kind of rode out a pretty heavy-duty winter. Um, but boy, it's gorgeous now. It's oh, so yeah. beautiful, oh, and yeah. and the weather's cooperating and <laughs> and healthy and vaccinated. That's where it's at. It's a gift. Yeah. Yeah. It's a gift. I don't know how science pulled this out of their hat so quickly, but it uh, it's a gift, and uh, we got vaccinated as soon as we could. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, if, if that spirit of cooperation could just seep out <laughs> into everything else, think of how amazing it would be. I know. Oh, yeah. I know. If the urgency that came to the vaccine would yeah. be applied to so many of the other problems that we deal with as a culture, as a people, as a race. But you know what? I'll say what uh, Paolo Carew said to me many years ago in Gallarate, Italy when things were looking pretty heavy duty over there with the rise of fascism again and such. He said, Maria, it's frightening, but we still have the music. <laughs> and we still have the music. Indeed. We sure do, man. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, I'm rooting for us all. I think it's gonna, it's gonna think, figure its way. I think the music is a, is a medicine and uh, I'm glad to be having having uh, this opportunity to, to share it uh, on the internet. There's people from all over the world on the feed and want to welcome everybody. That and, is awesome. And turn it over to you and have you play a couple of songs to let folks get to know you a little if they haven't heard you before. Well, I will, uh, that's lovely. And it's nice to meet everybody wherever you are, <laughs> wherever you're tuning in. So I, I'll play one of the Songwriting with Soldiers um, songs that I wrote. And I wrote this one with um, Lisa Gertz, who was the spouse, is the spouse of Josh Gertz, who Mary, I know you've written with, and have some great stories with of him kind of doing the Grand Ole Opry with you. So I met, uh, I met Lisa Gertz, and she was there more as a, sort of a spouse. But Mary Judd, one of the founders of Songwriting with Soldiers, has a beautiful radar and thought, gee, maybe maybe Lisa Garris wants to write a song. So we did. We have our, like, you know, two, two and a half hours. And um, about an hour into our session, when I thought there was one song that was going to happen, Lisa Garris talked about joining the military later in life. And I asked her what that was about. And the more she started talking, I thought, that's our song. So I will play this that I've written with Lisa Gertz called Army of One. Mama was an 18 year old runaway. Daddy was trucking down the A1A. A beer in his hand, 
steering with his knees Saw her long black hair Blowing in the breeze Blowing in the breeze It was a one day stand Written in the stars Two sweaty kids in the back of that car Accidentally stumbling on destiny Cause I, yes I I was meant to be I was meant to be And from that day on I was on my own Daddy built houses But we never had a home Every day was living In a little war zone And I'd fight them battles All alone With nowhere to hide Nowhere to run So I I learned to tie my shoes, dry my tears, make my supper, then disappear. Cut my hair, clean my clothes, get myself off to school, hoping nobody would know. Hoping nobody would know that I've been signing mama's names to permission slips cause it was hard to catch her in between sips and daddy's always working though he never had time he was too busy with them little white lines all them little white lines and from that day on I was on All alone, nowhere to hide, nowhere to run. So I became an army of one. I became an army of one. I was looking for the family. I never had Uncle Sam. Seemed like he'd be a pretty good dad. Tell me where to go. Tell me what to do and for the first time in my life I'd have a curfew Brothers and sisters who had my back The first time I knew peace was in Iraq Where I met somebody who felt like home Who fought my battles like there were his own Fought them like there was his own and I didn't have to hide, and I didn't have to run, and I didn't have to be an army of one. So that is Army of One. I think I go right into another song, Mary. I think that's what we talked about. So I will do it. Um, Jamie, if anything sounds horribly amiss, feel free to clock back in and let me know. Um, so I am in right now upstate New York, um, but in Brooklyn, where um, I was born and raised. I wrote a song a couple of years ago about a neighbor of mine who lived right across the street, never met him. But I was always pretty fascinated by him. Um, and I noticed, started seeing a little less of him. And then we'd seen that he'd passed away. And then maybe a couple of weeks after that, slowly we saw his wife starting to put some of his stuff out on the sidewalk, which is a time-honored tradition in New York. You know, you find treasures when you walk down the street. And she put his boots out there. And slowly, I got to know this guy through all the stuff that his wife had put out there. So I wrote this song. It's called Bob's Boots. I'm going to lose my glasses. I hope you're all still there. Um, 
It's called Bob's Boots. Bob's Boots are on the street They sure look strange without Bob's feet Out there standing all alone Like they're waiting for him to come back home Bob's books are in a box He sure did read a lot And though I never heard him say two words He talked up quite a storm To the neighborhood birds And Bob's wife is on the stoop She looks lost, she looks pooped Oh, yeah, dying sure his heart on the living Here she's lost so much But here she is giving cause Bob don't need it anymore If he's in the ground in a jar Or on some celestial shore Or waking up halfway around the world A six pound, two ounce baby girl Bob's shirts are on the fence And I can tell you that ain't where his money went I never seen him in a suit or tie But he always looked cool when he breezed on by Bob's son is back in town I wonder if they knew it was going down And I sure hope he got to say goodbye And that somebody reminds him about the alternate side And Bob's hat found a brand new head The guy from up the park with a bench for a bed He's wearing it cocked, huh, a little to the right And he's walking like he's got some place to be tonight Well, Bob don't need it anymore If he's in the ground in a jar Or on some celestial shore Or waking up halfway around the world A six pound, two ounce Girl. Bob's boots are on the street They sure look strange without Bob's feet yeah. wow. awesome. Such a cool song, wow Thank you very <laughs> much That's great, You're making me smile. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. And the one before, Lisa's on the feed listening, so. Lisa Gertz! <laughs> We wrote that in the Isaac Asimov room of the, of the Carrie, uh, Carrie Institute. And it was so cool because she talked about she and Josh and how they met while they were in the service and they had to kind of you know, be, you know, undercover about it. And I thought, oh my God, this song is writing itself. Checkpoint in Kandahar and they fell in love in the desert. So that's why when that little pivot happened, she started talking about herself. I just crinkled up that thing and <laughs> threw it over the shoulder. Man, and I got to tell you, Lisa was, you know, you know this, you, you locked down with somebody on that level and you were just bonded for life it's a real connection and it happens real fast it's yep, the most real fast efficient way to make a friend that i have ever found it just boom right there it's 
incredibly beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and she was brave and awesome and cool. And Josh, you know, they're an awesome family. And I have socks, as you do, with their kids' faces on yeah. them. So I how know. Can we not be friends I forever? love it. This is the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're going to put you in the green room for a little bit, have Jamie Bye, play a song. Everyone. And we're going to bring uh, you back for two more uh, shortly, all right? I'm awesome. I'll be listening. Thank you. Jamie, would you like to play one? I would, yeah. Sorry, getting all this going here. I um, I think today I'd actually like to play a song I didn't write. Um, it's been, yesterday was four years since we lost my friend and my mentor, Jimmy LaFave. It was four years, the anniversary yesterday. Oh, man, I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah, and uh, Ashley wrote a beautiful po a post about grief um, and and Jimmy and uh, traveling. and um, it's, it's beautiful. Um, but I would like to play a song that he wrote um, that uh, s continues to speak to me after his passing in, in a new way. It's one of those songs that uh, evolves its meaning, I think, as the years The good go ones by. come along for life. Lefebvre. <laughs> I hear his voice when you sing it. 
I hear him singing that. He used to yeah. play that when he played a lot. Yeah. And his voice was so spectacular. And I it hear it really was. And he taught he taught me so much about like it's funny when we were in um, on that train trip or in the Roots on the Rails. I had a conversation with Dead Rock West about this, but um, singing other people's songs. Like if you have um, a voice that you don't have to write all your own songs either. Like he brought. I know. I think M Michaela will share about Bob Dylan and. And the first song I sang with Jimmy was a Dylan song because um, he was such a huge Dylan fan. But he also, you know, uplifted a lot of songwriters and, and in yeah. his set and was able to bring voice to those songs, which was really, he taught me a lot about the responsibility of that, that you don't have to write all, you know, just find a great song and sing it. And if you love a great song, sing it. And um, to be in his band, you know, he would never uh, have a set list. And he would play songs in different keys and at different tempos every night. So he could bring a completely different emotion to the same song by using those tools. And um, I mean, that's just like the, the tip of the iceberg of, of so many things that he taught me. But um, but just how you commented on his voice, the responsibility of, of having a, a, a voice, voice like that. Like that was yeah. one of the biggest lessons he taught me. Yeah, and, and bringing, uh, bringing that voice to... Uh, to to other songwriters' songs, because mm -hmm. yeah, less and less of that happens. I think it's now. a generosity these days to do that. Mm -hmm. It really is. And you have to remain curious and open. I think to we have to, to listen. To you have to listen. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, listening is effortful, and uh, so many. So many of us tend to want to be heard instead of listen. And that's natural, though. You can't. Human nature, yeah. You can't, can't fault it, but he was a good listener, one of the very best. That's what made him so, uh, so extraordinary as an artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's missed. He's missed. Thank you for letting me share that. I loved him, too. I know you did, yeah. The joy inside your laughter I'll think about your hand inside mine I'll think about the softness of your sweet skin as I try not to think about time I'll think about my arms wrapped all around you I'll think the kindness in your eyes I'll think about how you showed up on my doorstep when I was trying not to think about time So many roads So many towns between us So many nights So many stairs to climb Thoughts to think is I miss you, and I try not to think about time.
I think about your candlestick fingers on my skin. I think about the shiver in your side. I think about how much. I wanna kiss you as I try not to think about time. So many roads, so many towns between. So many nights, so many stairs to climb. So many thoughts to think as I miss you, and I try not to think. About time, I will try not to think about Go to Italy. I knew you were going to say that. I almost said it. You knew I was going to say it? I know what Michaela's going to say. Welcome Welcome to Italy. (laughs) (laughs) How are you, my friend? Oh, look at you. You look fantastic. (laughs) Thank you, Mary. You too. And Jamie also. We are... uh, all ready to go back on stage, but actually you were already back on stage in US, right? Yes, uh, sir. Last week. Yes, yes, yes. sir. We did a week of shows in Arizona, and then we did a, a show in uh, Texas outside of uh, Hill Country. And uh, I saw that. Uh, I saw a beautiful video on your Facebook page of a trainer, uh, of a train in Arizona somewhere, I guess. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it really was lovely, place. and uh, and we uh, we were learning how to play standing up, and then uh-huh. remembering how to play sitting, sitting down, down. <laughs> standing up. It's, it's, it's two different so things, different. isn't it? Yes, yes, it's really difficult. Yeah. Different. So you, yes. You have you have your first live show in over a year coming up in Italy, right? Yes, yes. I'm uh, really excited uh, because. Uh, it was a long time ago, the last show. So it was in February 2020. And now I have a show on June 19 uh, in Pavia, that is uh, outside of Milan, Italy. And uh, I'm really excited. And uh, this week uh, we had some uh, rehearsal. Uh, actually, it wasn't well, in part a rehearsal, in part the joy to meet and to spend time together with Marco and Giovanna, the cello player. So I spent a very nice week playing music at home, uh, dreaming uh, about our uh, concert. Uh, I can't believe to be so happy to have one concert <laughs> coming in, <laughs> but, uh, but that's it. And I'm, uh, I'm uh, really happy. Really happy for that. <laughs> and uh, also, I uh, another great news for me. Uh, I will be uh, vaccinated this week uh, on Friday, yes. May 28th. So um, this uh, will be important to see uh, uh, you again soon and to travel around uh, Europe. Uh, if I can say to our friend, we also have planned to meet at some point this we summer. do we, we have not announced it yet but we have booked our flights and you have booked your flights and we will meet in denmark uh, yes and, and perform uh, at a um sort of reimagined tonder folk festival 
Uh, mm-hmm. It'll be an opportunity for us to perform live together, and hopefully we'll figure out a way to live stream it so people can see us together. That would be very, oh, be great. very good. Yes, uh, but yes. Uh, exciting, right? To book the flights, yes. and to have a plan. It'll be the end of August, and uh, y- yes, yes, we shall gather. A, yes, yes, yes. This is. It's yeah, not no. that far away. I mean, it's ninety not days. Not that far away, and uh, my idea of time really changed during <laughs> during last year. So. Same. <laughs> so uh, really, it's not far away at this point. Yeah, right. Yes. Right. And um, oh, uh, I loved uh, the song that uh, Jamie was playing. I love the uh, Jimmy LaFave too, uh, your mentor and uh, the great, great songwriter. And I know that uh, Jimmy loved Dylan, Bob Dylan yes. a lot, <laughs> like uh, like many of us. And I love his uh, uh, version of Dylan song. Many yeah, of them. He many was of one them. of the great Dylan uh, interpreters. He, he sang Dylan in a very, very... Uh, a special way. He knew how to get inside a Dylan song and really deliver the emotion. Oh, yes. And, and oh, yes. He was one of the masters of singing Dylan. And uh, uh, I, I, I see you have Dylan on Dylan. The yes, book, yes. The book. I, have, I have Dylan on Dylan uh, here because tomorrow, like uh, many of us know, is, uh, is Dylan birthday, 80th birthday, uh, birthday to, tomorrow. Unbelievable. Uh, I was thinking that he was an old songwriter when I was uh, a boy. Now uh, he's really an old song- songwriter. And uh, it's a, a joy and a miracle that uh, we had Dylan for most of our life, <laughs> telling us uh, the truth uh, and many other things. Yes, it's a, it's a great gift. So I was thinking to be obvious tonight and to play uh, maybe his uh, most famous song on my on my on my violin like a humble homage to bob dylan wishing him happy birthday happy birthday bob yes all right i will be obvious but uh, i love so much this song
Happy Birthday, Bob. <laughs> yes. That was so great. <laughs> <laughs> it was obvious, but I loved so much this song. Uh, it's uh, the, probably his uh, most famous song. And uh, there are all these questions. And uh, I was reading again this obvious song today, but it's not so obvious. These questions are not uh, rhetoric questions. They are important questions still. And so um, I think they are still uh, so uh, real and uh, they are so... Uh, difficult to accept this question today. So it's an obvious song, but it's not so obvious. It's a, such an incredible song this day too. He wrote this uh, 60 years ago, but uh, still so real and so true for this moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, it will never ever stop amazing me that a 20 year old wrote that song. Oh, yes, it's, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and that is such a beautiful sounding rendition. Thank you, Maestro. Thank, Thank you, you, my you. friends. I'm so excited we have a show on the books. Me too, me too, me <laughs> yeah. too, me too. I'm, I'm overexcited. <laughs> overexcited? You can't be overexcited. Yes, hey, I am. <laughs> Michele, will your yes. live, the folks want to know, will your show in Italy be live streamed? Uh, I will try to do something okay. because uh, uh, I know that uh, many people want to want to, to see it, so I will find it a way uh, to be uh, to be streamed somewhere excellent I, I will let them know thank you jamie that would be wonderful people would definitely watch and, uh, oh yes oh yeah. yes well uh, it was such a long time without concert that everybody want to see it now yes 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 yes, yes. yes. thank you my friend thank was... you my friend ciao 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 ciao, ciao. 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 Let's go back to New York, upstate, Catskills, and see Terry. Hi. <laughs> Isn't this technology cool? Boy, that was beautiful, the blowing in the wind. Man. I know that we can hop around the world like this. And How just, cool. I know, I know. I have to go to Venice, go to, go, to, go to Nashville, go to Catskills. Boom, boom, boom. It's fantastic. No jet lag. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> no jet lag. No... Uh, uh, no, 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 no time uh, wasted in travel hell. We're just boom, boom, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jamie, that was a beautiful rendition. Thank you. Thank really you beautiful. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to not waste words and let you just take it away with the music. Terry well, Radigan. <laughs> thank you very much. You, you, you guys got me... Um, there's a couple of songwriters who I love that have have passed away and it really you just have that moment of my gosh how lucky was I to know them for a half a second so um Jamie O'Hara a Nashville songwriter just one of my favorite songwriter singer artists passed away and um Billy Joe Shaver who was really lovely to me when I when I first got to Nashville so I want to I want to play his song it's called live forever um and dedicate that to Jamie O'Hara and every other beautiful songwriter who's who's crossed over this has been a little while but I but I got inspired by you guys um I'm gonna live forever I'm gonna cross that river I'm gonna catch tomorrow now You're gonna wanna hold me Just like I've always told you You're gonna miss me when I'm gone Nobody here will ever find me But I will always be around Just like the songs I leave behind me I'm gonna live forever now You fathers and you mothers Be good to one another Please try to raise your children right Don't let the 
darkness take them don't make them feel forsaken just lead them safely to the light when this old world is blown asunder and all the stars fall from the sky Remember someone really loves you We'll live forever, you and I I'm gonna live forever I'm gonna cross that river I'm gonna catch tomorrow now mm. Mr. Billy Joe Shaver um, what a treat this was. I'm, this is so bizarre to go from talking to talking and no one and screen and, um, but, uh, Mary and Jamie and McCalla, I hope I got, I hope I pronounced your name right. And everyone out there listening, what a treat this is. So, uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to play you a song I wrote. It's, it's a love letter to Brooklyn, my hometown. And, um... I wrote this song when Brooklyn was kind of being discovered by everyone who loved it. And, um, and I didn't want to begrudge these new people moving into my town, but I all of a sudden felt like Brooklyn got a whole bunch of new fancy friends and uh, didn't really have time for me anymore. So, so this was, this was my, uh, my little uh, pleading letter to Brooklyn. <laughs> Look like you're the cool kid now Everybody wants to get to know you somehow But I knew that all along Yes, I, I can't blame you, must be nice To finally find yourself up in the spotlight But I'd be lying if I didn't say that I felt torn Cause you know Brooklyn I loved you before all of them Back when you was tough and gritty Before you become the Emerald City And now that you're all cleaned up I'm feeling like you don't want my love Like you moved on without me Like soon you'll forget all about me But oh, Brooklyn where I took my first breath Brooklyn You're where I took my first step I got smacked and had my first good cry Hell, you where I even told my very first lie And to think after all of that You could just up and leave me flat After all of that And I know, I know Oh yes, things are gonna change But don't you dare tell me that's how to stay the same Cause I barely recognize the place Oh, used to be, used to be I walked down these streets A million voices called out to me But these days I barely recognize a face So come on, Brooklyn I loved you before all of them Back when you was tough and gritty Before you become the Emerald City And now that you're all cleaned up I'm feeling like you don't want my love Like you moved on without me Like soon you'll forget all about me But oh, Brooklyn where I found my voice And these six strings making all of this noise Found the nerve to think I could be more than a little old gal From Avenue P And to think after all of that You could just up and leave me flat After all of that So come on Brooklyn Say that we could still be friends That we could hang out like we used to 
sit on the stoop and grab a you till mama sends us to the corner store tells us to stop at miss tilly's door and see if she needs anything and then to look in on miss josephine and when we get down to the avenue wait for someone to cross you wait for someone to cross you when you get down to the avenue come on brooklyn i love to be for all of them i love to be for all of them <laughs> Hang on, girls. I got to put my glasses back on so I can see you. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Uh, so Hi. As, you, as you're going down the road in that song, Jamie looked at me and she said, Brooklyn was affordable at one time? I'm like, it was. <laughs> my lifetime, it was. <laughs> and you know the crazy thing is that anywhere that I go and I play that, people are like, oh, my God, that's my town. And I've heard that about Nashville. I've yeah. heard people be like, oh, my goodness, yeah, I remember when you could buy a place in East Nashville. You Maybe could. not so much anymore. So you not can just anymore. insert your hometown. Not at all. Not mm -hmm. at all. No way, no how. Well, Waco, Texas is still very affordable. If, it, <laughs> if anyone's looking for it's it's true. On, it's changing, though. I mean, that's true. It's, Waco's going up, though, because yeah, of that television show. Because of the television show. show. But you can still. But, that's why they do that television show there, because you can still buy it. For so cheap. I guess so, but you're right. It's not just Brooklyn. No, so it's... many towns across the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, no, it's just the states that have uh, become uh, impossible to live in because of the cost of living. Yeah. yeah, man. And you know, they say that the population is going down now. So who knows what happens? I guess the, everybody's just trying to find a little a little tree to put a nest in. Yeah, the Times had a big story on that today. I always yeah. read my Sunday Times. And uh by the turn of the next century, the population is going to be much less than it is now. We're going, wow. we're in a downward trend. This is not good for me to know while I'm in the middle of the new season of The Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> <laughs> it just serves to freak me out even more. <laughs> we keep hearing that. I guess we should watch. We should or shouldn't watch. You know what? No. I want to tell you should, and then I want to tell you shouldn't all in the same breath. How's that? Yeah. It's a lot easier with the current administration and office Exactly. To watch I it. couldn't do dystopian okay? uh, no, reading no, no, or, no, 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 no. or art during the prior, prior administration. Uh, yeah. There was too much dystopia going on in the real world, but now I probably could handle it with the background of, of some a little bit more uh, stability, although things are still pretty weird. <laughs> it's so good, you guys, though, really. If you want, as long as you have one another to cuddle and hold, watch it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Look. Ah! <laughs> uh, well you know what we would love for you to play one more before we say goodbye we love you so much and we're so grateful that you said yes to joining us oh what a treat you guys really it's so lovely jamie thank you for all the tech stuff and being such a you know cool hand luke about Cheers. trying to make sure everybody's feeling good about what they're doing um Cool, man. I would love to play one more song. And thanks again for for having me. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna play a song. I had to. I'll tell you guys this while you're still in the in, in the, the box. box with me. Um, there's a there's a really cool thing called the Bushwick Book Club, and it's out of Brooklyn. Some wonderful songwriters put it together, and you know you get a book and you read it, and maybe there's like eight or ten songwriters invited, and then you have this. The cool show and you get to see what everybody has sort of read this book and what they took away to make a song about mm -hmm. so uh the book that we had done this one time was kurt vonnegut um what was it called a man without a country oh wow. and he talked about his being famously hooked to cigarettes um which i was also and i was afraid that i would never kind of break free of that and he had this great line that I read in the book called uh, a fire on one end and a fool on the other. <laughs> He's the <laughs> Wow. So, uh, so yeah. this was my, my ode to the Marlboro Lights. So with that, I'll take it away. Here we go. Um, don't smoke. Don't smoke. But at least I got a song out of it. You and I were 
destined to be lovers Oh, from our very first kiss I was yours, I could not resist So you go on and you take all my money And that tar goes down sweeter than two below, honey You're my last thought in the evening My first thought of the day Lordy, how you take my breath away Like you were made for me It's like you were made for me It's like someone knew every little thing It's amazing when you haven't been singing for a while, you realize, holy crap, man, things are high. Uh, <laughs> it's like getting your getting your sea legs back. Oh, it is, and you get used to singing and sitting down, and then you stand Oof. up to play a real show. It's like, well, shoot, you shape the chords ho totally differently when you're standing up. It's a whole <laughs> like, other whoa, deal. Okay. It's a whole <laughs> other deal, exactly, exactly. Well, thank you for joining us. It's been our great pleasure to share this Sunday afternoon with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope we get to be at a retreat together again soon. Uh, Same with the here. Songwriting with soldiers. Same and, here, uh, and thank you guys so much. It was it what a lovely way to spend the afternoon? The pleasure is ours. I hope we can share a stage somewhere and uh, keep this going. Thank you, thank you a million times over. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye bye. bye. Uh, and I'm going to do a quick commercial. Uh, this is 10 CDs. It's everything I've recorded in my career. It comes in a box. It's called a bundle. All 10. Yow, sorry. <laughs> I hit the mic. If people right. were listening in headphones, that wasn't fun. All 10 for $50. And we will send it to you immediately. A 10 CD bundle, 50 bucks. That has been... A godsend in the pandemic as people have purchased it and kept us going. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
And of course, we do have t-shirts, small to triple X. It says, Mercy Now, Mary Gaucher. There we go. Whoa, get it right. There it is. And uh, Jamie has a Patreon that she would mm -hmm. love to, uh, to uh, have you join for as little as $3 a month. It, it has uh, benefits, and uh, one of them is uh, you get to hear new music uh, before anybody else. You send people postcards too, don't you? Well, at a certain level, but right now, I was gonna say one thing. I'm um, I'm doing a spring cleaning sale on my website, um, so I have a mystery merch bundle item for twenty five dollars, which includes a mystery T shirt. You just give me your size, and I will give you some mystery items, and I promise they're good. Okay. So postcard, you know, maybe a postcard. It might be a list of the songs that are coming on the new record that has not been revealed, but you would know before anyone else. Yeah, and, it's for it's for Jamie Harris super fans. Yeah, and and, uh, and the Patreon. Yeah, I did post a little bit of the recording of this next song. Oh, fantastic, fantastic! Let's play it for him. So Patreon um, dot com slash Jamie Harris. That's it. Mm -hmm. We'll get you there, and um, it's an insiders club, and she would love to have you uh, as a patron, and. Uh, Onward, upward. Why don't you play one, and I'll play one, and we'll call it a day. This is a song that Jamie and I wrote together, I think, in the dead of winter, and uh, it is uh, a song that uh, we played a, a bunch on the trip in Winslow, and people really were resonating with it. And uh, I hope you like it. It's called "How Could You Be Gone." <laughs> Park and watch the car 
what to say I don't know what I believe I just know I have to leave I walk alone back to my car I go before the good best start distant lands May the moon and stars delight you As the daylight dims Till the morning sun warms your face Till I see you
you never be a stranger May you never feel alone May you reunite with family and friends May they walk you home May love embrace you In a dance that never ends May you rest in gentle arms Till I see you again May you rest in gentle arms Till I see you again Thanks everybody We'll see you next week with our guest Shamika Copeland Singer extraordinaire all around badass. All around badass. <laughs> Strong woman. Mm -hmm. Shamika's one of my faves, and uh, she'll be with us next Sunday. Please join us. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Appreciate the tips. <laughs>